Now, what is spring? If your answer to the question is that's something that does dependency injection, that's the perfect answer as of 2006. As of this day and age, that's no longer just the case. Spring is much, much more than dependency injection. It's a whole application framework. It has its origins from the concept of dependency injection, but it does a whole lot more. It's actually something that lets you build enterprise Java applications. There are like 542 gazillion enterprise Java applications out there, and they all do things which are very, very different, but the underlying concept, the underlying foundation of all those enterprise Java applications have a lot of similarities. When you're writing a business service, you do similar things for every business service, no matter what business problem they're trying to solve. Things like transactional services, you want to establish a transaction to connect to the database. Those are common problems. There are common things that every enterprise application needs to solve. And Spring handles all those things. It provides a template, it provides a framework which lets you build those enterprise applications. It also has a programming and configuration model. The really cool thing about Spring is that you focus only on building your business services and you let Spring handle a lot of these common concerns for things like connecting to the database, running queries, or things like handling HTTP requests, having some kind of an MVC layer. What Spring lets you do is build classes, which are simple POJOs, and they have annotations on them, which denote what they are. So let's say you're writing a business service, right? You write your business service with functionality, the code containing only the logic that's specific to your business application. And then what you do is annotate that business service, that class, with something like at service. And that lets Spring know that you intend that class to be a service. And it applies a whole lot of things to that class and it manages the life cycle of the class so that it acts as a service. So what you do when you're building your application is you focus on your business problem and you let Spring handle the rest. So it provides that model for you to build those applications. And then it also provides infrastructure support. Spring has support for various different things. Like I mentioned again, connecting to the database. If you want to connect to an RDBMS database, you want to connect to a, like a MongoDB database, Spring has infrastructure support for it already. And you can leverage some of those infrastructure uh, when you're building your applications. So this is Spring and there are a lot of cool things about Spring, but there are certain problems with it too. The first problem is that it is a huge framework. Spring started out by trying to solve these common concerns that people could have when they're building enterprise applications, right? Now, these common concerns are not just one thing. There are so many different things. There are so many different ways in which you can build an enterprise application. And Spring, over the years, has tried to address all those different ways and provide support for all those different ways. You come to Spring and say, hey, I need to build this particular thing with this combination and this configuration. Spring says, well, I have a solution for you and it has that solution in the framework. So over the years, there have been all these different ways of building things and Spring has support for all these different ways. And it's ended up being a huge framework in the process. There are so many things that Spring does that it's at this point of time very overwhelming to even get started. Like there are so many things. How do I even get started with a Spring application? There are multiple setup steps. Spring can connect to MongoDB, it can connect to RDBMS, it can connect to a whole lot of other, uh, you know, JDO, which is outdated, but it still has support in the Spring framework. So since it does a whole lot, it needs a whole lot of configuration for it to do exactly what you want it to do, right? Since it has a lot of capabilities, you need to specify exactly what you want Spring to do. So there's a lot of setup and configuration steps that you need to do with Spring. And then you have multiple build and deploy steps. You need to know how to build and how to deploy. Again, you have various combinations. The important fundamental problem here is that Spring has a lot of capability, it has a lot of flexibility, and that capability and flexibility comes with a cost. You need to do a whole lot to get it to do exactly what you want it to do. And the second thing is, since it can do a whole lot, you don't really have a starting point. You don't really have a guide which says, okay, this is the best practice. This is how you should ideally do it. 
unless there is a need for something else. So there is no pathway for you to get to a point where you have a Spring application that is exactly what you wanted to do, right? You're left to figure that out on your own. So this is a problem that the Spring framework has. If you were to start building a Spring application, you have these problems to tackle with. And this is where Spring Boot comes in handy. Wouldn't it be cool if you could somehow abstract these steps out? Again, going back to the original premise of Spring, you want to have something that is abstracting away all these infrastructure concerns, all these setup and configuration concerns, so that you just focus on your business logic. Granted, there are 100 different ways to build a Spring application, but if only somebody could tell you that this is, for 80% of the cases, the right way to do it. And then for the 20%, you just configure it and tweak it a little bit so that it works differently, right? If you address the majority use case, if you have some kind of an opinionated framework, opinionated configuration, it says, okay, this is the way you start with, and then tweak it if necessary. That would be really, really good. And that's what Spring Boot does.